Praise belongs to Allah. We praise him and we ask him for guidance and forgiveness. And we seek protection in Allah from the malice of our own souls and the evil of our own actions. Whom Allah guides, no one can lead them astray and whom he leaves astray, no one can lead them back to the right path. I bear witness that there is no, none other but Allah worthy of worship by himself, no associate to him. And I bear witness that Muhammad is his servant and messenger. O oh, you who believed, fear Allah as he should be feared, and die not except as Muslims. O oh, you who believed, fear Allah and always say a word directed to the truth, that Allah may make your conduct whole and sound and forgive you your sins. He that obeys Allah and his messenger has then attained the highest achievement. So today my khutbah is going to be about communication styles and we're, we will try to understand some modern communication styles with Quranic wisdom. In Surah Al-Isra, Allah Ta'ala says to the believers, and tell my believers to only speak what is best. And so how do we speak what is best? There's different ways of understanding this. And one way is to look at the communication styles that are most prevalent in our life right now and see which ones we should adopt and what changes we can make in our lives. So I have always thought that this is true, that most problems are simply communication problems. I'll say that one more time. Most problems are communication problems. So if we fix the communication, maybe that problem that we are facing would go away. In chapter 95, verse four, Allah reminds us to strive for excellence in our lives since we were created in the best mold by Allah. And so this applies to all areas of our life. And we know that human beings are the ones gifted with speech and language and the ability to communicate. So this is a beautiful right and responsibility that Allah has given to us. And it is our duty to use it in the best way. So when we communicate with someone, the purpose is usually to understand what the other person is saying and to say something that can be easily understood. And we know that all of us have been born with a certain temperament, a certain nature, and these are just our natural conditions or impulses, but they can become moral conditions in our life when we use them consciously and deliberately. And we, when we use them at the right time, in the right amount, and in the right way to achieve the best results. And so let's look at the common communication styles and try to understand them in the light of some Quranic teachings. So one very common style is passive communication. In this style, a person tends to not say what needs to be said. They just go along with what others are saying or asking them to do. And they don't generally communicate their needs or any problem that they're having. They may not stand up for their rights. They may be silent or just may give polite automatic answers. And when a person is in this communication style, others may not understand their needs and address them. And so frustration will inevitably build up. So when we look through the lens of the Quran, we, found, we find that the Quran talks extensively of the ill effects of any bad company that we might have. And that can be seen as being with people who are not exerting a good influence on us, but we're not saying anything or resisting what they're saying or being assertive in front of them. So if we're finding it very hard to be firm and say no to others, fearing that others might dislike us, then we may be drawn into things that we don't like, even though that, that may not be our point of view or our value. So when we look at the Quran, we find that many opponents and deniers fall into this category since they are sticking to what they already know, right? And they're not willing to take uh, make a change in their life. Maybe the more powerful people in their life are denying the truth and say, so they go along with it. The next style is an aggressive communication style. And in this, we are reminded of the Quranic verse, chapter 31, verse 18. And do not treat people with arrogance, nor roam the earth proudly, 
God does not like those who are arrogant and boastful. So speaking in an angry manner is characteristic of the aggressive style where the body language can be overpowering or even threatening. Um, words may be bossy or overconfident and others may feel threatened and pulled down, put down, sorry. So when we think through the lens of the Quran, uh, Fir'aun and Abu Jahl are extreme examples of aggressive communication that come to mind. And, um, but we can also think of times in our life where you know we may be called upon to use aggressive communication it may be helpful for us but we will talk about that a bit more later on the third common communication style is passive aggressive and in this style as the name suggests the person who is passive ends up getting so frustrated that now they want to stand up for themselves, but they're not doing it in a healthy way. So they're not responding directly in the right manner in the, in the right time, but they're trying to undermine others in different ways. They're not expressing their emotions in a healthy way. If they have a problem with someone, it's unlikely that they will talk to that person. It's more likely they will talk to someone else, talk behind their back. So engaging in backbiting and backstabbing is common in this communication style. And so it seems like such a person would not be confident in their ability to communicate. Maybe they haven't learned positive communication styles or maybe they're in such a power imbalance that it's hard for them. And so when we think of uh, examples in the Quran, most of the opponents of the prophet can fall in this category. Surah Humaza reminds of this, of people who are backstabbing and jeopardizing others. The hypocrites is a large category of people that are spoken of in the Quran, people who say one thing, but they're, there's a different thing in their hearts. And so if we're not careful, this can be our default communication style, because in order to do something positive, it requires energy, it requires us to be intentional and mindful. And if we're not doing that, then we can have a tendency to fall into negative communication styles. But as we will see later on, the all other communication styles are not necessarily negative all the time. They may have uh, a place uh, depending upon the circumstances. So the best communication style that is considered to be a positive communication style is being assertive. In problems directly with a problem solving mindset. And he was able to set boundaries and limits clearly and calmly. And so when I see, when I read Surah Al-Kafirun in the Quran, this reminds me of this assertive communication style. I'll read the translation. Say, oh, those who disbelieve or hide the truth, I serve not what you serve, nor do I serve him who, nor do you serve him whom I serve, nor shall I serve that which you serve nor do you serve him whom I serve. For you is your recompense and for me is my recompense. So that's an example of assertive communication. And when we look through the Quran, we know that in general, we are advocated to walk on the middle path, which means not going to one extreme or the other extreme. And that can apply to communication as well. The thing about being assertive is that it's not enough for us to be assertive, but it's also important for us to give other people the opportunity in our life to be assertive, to welcome their assertive communication. Because if we don't do that, then we're kind of um, helping the people around us to incline to unhealthy communication styles. So that is something to think about. So I will now end the first half of the khutbah and then inshallah in the second half we will continue thinking about these communication styles. I say this saying of mine and I seek forgiveness from Allah for me and for you and to the rest of the Muslims. So ask Allah for forgiveness for he is the forgiver, the merciful. Bismillah, walhamdulillah, wa salatu salamu ala rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the name of Allah and exaltations be to Allah and blessings and peace be upon the messenger of Allah. 
So now reflecting upon all of these communication styles, what we need is critical thinking and reflection before we speak. We don't need a formula that we have one set communication style and no matter what, we always use that because that would not be helpful. The intelligent person, the aware person is the one who changes according to the situation. And we have this example in the Holy Quran where Allah says that the, the believers are those who are compassionate with each other, but when they need to be harsh or stern with the disbelievers, then they are harsh or stern. So when we think of the aggressive communication style, we can think of many examples that would work out where aggression is needed, for example, during warfare where some drastic action is needed. For example, when someone is being oppressed or abused, if you need to be aggressive at that time, that is a good use of an aggressive communication style. If we think of the Treaty of Hudaybiyah, the Blessed Prophet, peace be upon him, was offered terms of peace that were not fair and that were seen kind of compromising the integrity of the Muslims, and many of the other companions were upset that he was agreeing to these terms. So the Blessed Prophet, it seems to me that was taking an, a passive approach at that time, but that approach led to his success because in his wisdom, he understood that that would be successful in the long term because hostilities would cease and the peaceful message of Islam could reach others. Also, the Quran talks about using restraint when we are angry or passing by the ignorant with peacefulness or dignity, instead of being directly assertive or engaging someone, that is also a recommended method and to control our anger in certain situations when it would be beneficial to control it. And so those are the good parts of the passive and the aggressive communication style. When I think about passive aggressive, I realize that seeking the opinions on, from others or seeking the advice from others on how to handle a situation while it may seem to be passive aggressive, or it may be that you know, you're not directly addressing the problem, but Allah does allow us to seek justice for any wrong that is committed against us. And especially when there's, like I said before, a power imbalance, like if a less powerful person is facing a, a more powerful person, and so it's not possible for them to be assertive, and so they need help, they need support, so I don't think it would be called passive aggressive, but you know, we can think of ways in which that might also be used in certain situations. So when we think overall, even children of the same family from the same parents have different temperaments and they react differently to different communication styles. So when we talk to somebody, we also have to think of their temperament, what might be best for them and what might bring the best result in a certain situation. But the key point here is to think about, we all have natural inclinations and those can be neither good nor bad. It just depends upon how we're channeling them. Right now, since we're entering upon a holiday season, we just had one beautiful Thanksgiving event. So we're talking to people, engaging with them more than before. And so, <coughs> excuse me, reflecting upon our communication styles and thinking about how we can improve our communication and to lean towards being assertive in our families, to have an open and healthy communication environment where we know that we can bring up any topic, whether it's our parents, our children, our peers, and talk about it openly and calmly and have good results uh, from that. So in the end, I'll leave me and you with this thought that what is your communication style? This is a good time for us to reflect upon this and how do you encourage people to communicate with you? And also as a last thought is that sometimes we might think that we have one communication style, but it might not come across in that way as others. I know that my default style is aggressive. And many times I think I'm being assertive, but the person I'm talking to might think that I'm being aggressive. And so it's good to even ask others, how do you think I communicate with you? What feedback can you give me? And, on my communication style, how can we communicate better? Because this is such a gift from Allah, the gift of speech and communication, and it can really change our life for the better, or it can harm our life in great ways. Uh, our tongue is more powerful than any weapon that anybody could wield. And so closing out, 
Servants of Allah, Allah commands justice, the doing of good and liberality to kith and kin, and he forbids all shameful deeds and injustice and rebellion. He instructs you that you may remember. Remember Allah, the supreme in glory, and he will remember you and be thankful to him, and he will increase you in bounty and seek his forgiveness. He will forgive you and have taqwa of him. He will make for you a way out of your issues. And so let's all take a minute to pray that Allah Ta'ala guide us to the best communication styles with each other. Let it be a blessing in our lives that we can use this power of speech that Allah has given to us and use it to have good relations with others, as well as to help improve people who don't have good relations and to always say what is true and beautiful. Thank you very much for listening to the khutbah. That is the end. Thank you.